hours after Pakistan minister responded to Donald Trump's Twitter trade tirade, Imran Khan too took to Twitter to lash out at the U.S. president in a series of tweets. The Pakistan's prime minister accused America of making them a scapegoat for United States failure. Imran Khan tweeted, and I quote. Record needs to be put straight on Mr. Trump's tirade against Pakistan. One, no Pakistani was involved in 9-11, but Pakistan decided to participate in the US war on terror. Second, Pakistan suffered 75,000 casualties in this war and over 123 billion was lost to economy. US aid was a minuscule 20 billion. Our tribal areas were devastated and millions of people were uprooted from their homes. The war drastically impacted lives of ordinary Pakistanis. Pakistan continues to provide free lines of ground and air communications. Can Mr. Trump name any ally that gave such sacrifice? He added, and I quote, Instead of making Pakistan a scapegoat for their failures, the US should do a serious assessment of why despite 1,40,000 NATO troops plus 250,000 Afghan troops and reportedly 1 trillion spent on war in Afghanistan, the Taliban today are stronger than before. Earlier in the day, Pakistan's human rights minister also lashed out at Donald Trump. Now, Shireen Mazari tweeted, and I quote, Trump's tirade against Pakistan and his claim that the Pakistan does not do a damn thing for the United States of America should be a lesson for those Pakistani leaders who kept appeasing the US, especially after 9-11. The renditions. The loss of Pakistani lives, the free space for Raymond Davis and others, and other operatives. She added that the illegal killing by drone attacks, the list is endless, but once again, history shows appeasement does not work. Also, whether China or Iran, US policies or containment and isolation do not coincide with Pakistan's strategic interests. She quoted another tweet and I said, Donald Trump suffer conveniently from perpetual historic amnesia. Both Shirin Mazari and Imran Khan were responding to an interview Donald Trump gave on Sunday, defending his decision to cut aid to Islamabad. Trump had said, and I quote, Pakistan does not do a damn thing for us. The US president added that it was Pakistan that provided safe heaven to terrorist Osama bin Laden. Trump tweeted, and I quote, living in Pakistan right next to the military academy every day in Pakistan, he knew that he was there. And we give Pakistan 1.3 billion a year. And he accuses them of knowing that Osama was there. So he writes, and I quote him, Laden lived in Pakistan. We are supporting Pakistan. We are giving them 1.3 billion a year, which we don't give them anymore. I ended it because they don't do anything for us. They don't do a damn thing for us, unquote. Now, Trump's latest criticism of Pakistan comes ahead of the 10 years anniversary of the 2008 Mumbai terror attacks. It also comes just weeks after Pakistan's record on terror was discussed between Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi and US Vice President Mike Pence in Singapore. It also comes days before Indian Prime Minister is scheduled to meet the US President during the G20 summit in Argentina latest this month. And I'm John Banas Malik, Bureau Chief from Islamabad. Anis, uh, a lot of uh, tit for tat, a lot of spat between Donald Trump, Shreen Mazari and uh, the Prime Minister of uh, Pakistan, Imran Khan. Uh, I don't think, you know, you, there is any other, you know, more pol political elbow room to vitiate the atmosphere between the uh, United States and uh, Pakistan. Well, yes, uh, this is this is one uh, common thing that has that Donald Trump has uh, enabled the Pakistani opposition and the government to unite on one uh, platform. Uh, the opposition parties that includes the Pakistan People's Party and uh, the Pakistan Muslim League Nawaz, uh, former Foreign Minister Khwaja Mohammad Asif from the Pakistan Muslim League Nawaz, he tweeted last night and he said that uh, the only price that we're paying uh, uh, to the United the, to the war of the United States, the war on terror that Pakistan has went into, is the price of blood. That that is a heavy price that Pakistan is paying. Just a while back, uh, the, uh, the former foreign minister of Pakistan, Hina Rabanika, she made a statement uh, while talking to the Pakistani media and, say, and she said that it was rightly called for by the Pakistani Prime Minister to call out the, on the uh, United States President because uh, it, is to, it, is, uh, uh, it is to be known that what has the United States done for Pakistan? Does the does United States actually care for Pakistan except for the fact that they, get, they give money and form of aid? Uh, now, Pakistani Prime Minister has went on record and in an attempt to set the record, straight as he had said in his in his tweets he said that pakistan has lost over 123 billion dollars in the
this uh, war on terror in the past 17 years and uh, and in return it's got just 20 billion dollars to what uh, in uh, in response to what uh, the, uh, the United States president had been referring to that uh, the, the United States had been given billions and billions of dollars to Pakistan so clearly a kit for tat reply now the development comes in Karthik uh, just uh, uh, right after that the 5th of September meeting between American Secretary of State Mike Pompeo and the Pakistani uh, Foreign Minister and then he later, uh, the American guest later met the Pakistani Prime Minister, where we saw a similar release both from the Pakistani Ministry of Foreign Affairs and the U US State Department, which said and vowed to reset these and rebuild these ties. But clearly, these statements from the Paki uh, from the United States President Donald Trump and then these counter tweets from the Pakistani Prime Minister, they indicate that these relationships are further narrowing down, and it can not, it, it's certainly not on the verge of being resetted uh, as of what was claimed on the 5th of September. Yes, Karthik. Uh, Anas, thank you very much uh, for this update and joining me from Islamabad on this issue.